When it comes to fishing, especially for beginner fishermen, some of the most common questions or comments I get from new anglers is that fishing is too complicated. And I'm not necessarily gonna deny that because there are certainly some instances or some types of fishing where fishing can be a little bit more complicated. But if I'm being honest, for the most part, fishing is relatively simple as long as you keep it simple. We're gonna do probably one of the most laid back and simple types of fishing there is, and that's just using night crawlers. I don't really know what we're gonna catch, but when in doubt, throw night crawlers because essentially everything eats or bites night crawlers. So I'm gonna get rigged up here and we're just gonna cast. It's like one o'clock PM right now, so it's essentially high noon. And usually when you're fishing summer like this, the fishing activity is really hot in the morning and the evening. So as the morning dies off and you get into afternoon where the sun's high and everything gets hot, usually the fishing really dies off. So when the fishing dies off and the fish are less active, you want to present slower baits, slower lures. So the slowest type of lure or bait that you can use is just bottom fishing with a worm and you just leave it out in the bottom of the water. So this right here is my rig. This is called a Carolina rig. So my line right here, this is 10 pound braid. This is the line that goes directly to my reel, also called your main line. And I have a no roll sinker slid onto my main line so it can slide up and down my line. This is a one ounce weight. The reason why I went with a no roll sinker is because we're fishing a pretty fast river. And because there's a lot of current, if you have like a egg sinker weight where it's just like a circle, it's easier to roll on the bottom and it's hard to get your weight to stick on the bottom. But since you have a flat weight like this one here, this no roll sinker is just a lot harder to flip and roll like this down the current. So that's why I have a no roll sinker here. Below my weight, I have a bead. This bead will just help prevent my weight from jamming onto my knot and breaking my knot. And then after my bead, I have a swivel. I have my 10 pound braid tied to this eye of the swivel using a uni knot. And then on the other eye of this swivel right here, I have uh, eight pound fluorocarbon. And I also have a uni knot tied onto this eye of the swivel. And then I have about a 12 inch leader. And then I just have it tied to this hook right here. This is a size 10 bait holder hook. And the reason why I have this hook right here is because we're gonna be using night crawlers. So these hooks right here, they're what I prefer when I'm using night crawlers because the night crawlers just stick on this hook very nice. And the reason why I'm going with this size is because this size is a decent size so that most of the fish in this river can actually eat my hook because if your hook's too big for a fish's mouth they're not going to be able to like actually eat your hook and you're not going to be able to get the hook set on their mouth that's as simple as it gets right there we got some evergreen night crawlers just picked them up at the store you know it, it sounds funny but a lot of people are really like scared of touching night crawlers when they slither around like this right so we're not gonna use the whole worm, we're just gonna use enough to cover the bait or the hook. So the worm is like covering the shank of my hook and I like to leave about almost an inch of the worm dangling off of my uh, hook. For the rod, I just got this ugly stick elite rod. Uh, this is a seven foot medium rod and then I just have a Shimano Sahara 2500 reel on here. And then again, I'm running 10 pound braid as my main line. You look out way out towards the middle. That's where all the water is raging. We don't want to cast there because we're going to have a lot of trouble to get our weight to stick. And a lot of fish actually don't like the fast current because they're going to spend too much energy trying to fight the current. So this little pool right here, you can see it's a very calm water. A lot of fish will come into these calmer waters and start feeding. So we're just going to gently cast this thing out there. Not far at all, but if we don't get any hits, we'll throw a little bit farther out. But for now, let's just leave it there and see if we could catch something. So we got our bottom fishing rig or rod set up, just sitting on that rock right now, waiting for a fish to bite. I've got a smaller rod and reel set up. I've got a float, and then I have essentially the same hook and worm on here. So this rig right here, the bottom fishing rig, is fishing on the bottom. That way if there's fish swimming around on the bottom, those are the fish that we're going to target. With this float, we're going to be targeting not the bottom, the bottom dwelling fish, but we're going to be targeting the fish that are closer up on the surface. I really don't know if they're high or low, so we're just going to cast this around and 
We'll see if we can catch a fish. So I'm gonna throw on my hoodie because I don't wanna get sunburnt and I don't wanna get any disease regarding the sun. So pull up the sleeves here. And by the way, if you wanna cop yourself one of these hoodies, they're made by one of my partners, Vortex Optics. They have a lot of uh, cool apparel. So they have this thing called the Sun Slayer hoodie where you know, it's designed to protect yourself or your skin from the sun and all the bad things that come from the sun. So if you're interested in copying one of these epic Sun Slayer hoodies, you can actually use the discount code I have provided in the description or on the screen right now and uh, go get yourself a nice little Sun Slayer hoodie. I say that, but I'm, I'm wearing like shorts, which I guess is counterintuitive, but I guess you could say it's better than nothing. I didn't even realize it. There's a dead sucker fish right here. Sucker fish are actually what was on the top of my mind when I was coming here. We have a pretty good chance at catching sucker fish because they are bottom dwellers. Uh, sucker fish, they kind of just go around and just kind of suck food off the bottom. And that's kind of what that rod right there is doing. The, the worm's just on the bottom. There's a crayfish right here. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm gonna catch this crayfish right here. Does he like this piece of worm? Oh my gosh, look at that. Can you guys see that? <laughs> he has my piece of worm. Oh, that's hilarious. There's a lot of crayfish in this river too. Oh, he fell off. That's funny. Mm. I'm gonna try to adjust my bobber leader length. Let my worm sink a little deeper. I only have my worm about a foot off below my bobber, so we're gonna slide this up, maybe another foot. There's a bass that just jumped right there. Nice little smallie. So we know there's fish in here. They're just not biting. We're gonna walk down the river a little bit that spot was not producing so we're gonna hike over and hopefully there's a spot that has shade because it's a little toasty right now don't know if you guys can tell but not only is the sun hot but all these rocks that i'm stepping on right now are absorbing all that heat and there's like heat from the sun and there's heat from these rocks. Since this rod is already rigged up, let's just toss this right there. You can see the water goes out in the main current right there, and then it swirls back. So it's like a whirlpool right here. I can feel my weight getting tossed around in this whirlpool. So we're just gonna fish here. There's a nice little spout right there that's pumping in fresh water. So maybe there are some fish that are stacked right here waiting for food to get pumped through that right there. I don't know, we'll see. This water's fast though. I think I've snagged. Yep. Okay, so this water is very fast and this one ounce weight might not cut it. I might have to switch to like a two ounce weight. Let's cast a little closer. I'm just kind of exploring here, just trying to figure out what the water's letting me do and not let me do. Well, it looks like this rod's fine right here, so. Pull this bell on. I did get my second rod rigged up as well, so. I don't know how that little, oh, I'm getting hit right here. Yep, that's a fish, yep. Oh, fish on. Oh, this is a nice fish. 
right in front of that little spill right there. I knew it. I knew there was going to be fish right there. Yep, this is a nice fish. Oh, he came off. He came off. I couldn't do anything. Oh, no. I wonder if my worm was too big and he didn't get the hook. You know? That was a big fish, though. So, we're just going to toss it right back in there. That little spill right there, I think it's giving them plenty of oxygen. So, there's some big fish stacked right there. That was like two minutes with this cast, too. It wasn't even that long. So, I'm going to leave it right here again. Am I getting hit right here? Okay, two rods might be a little hectic right now. Yep, he's on. Oh, he's off. Okay. This is kind of where uh, two rods kind of become a hassle. Okay, so they're definitely in this little spill right here. Let's just throw this little chunk back out and see if he's willing to take it again. Oh, I have a fish. I knew it. I had a fish on this whole time. <laughs> Dude, this is hectic. Sucker fish. That's exactly why I thought we were going to catch here. Nice little sucker fish right here. Not a giant by any means, but let me tell you guys, sucker fish are really fun to fight. Look at that guy. That's why they call them a sucker fish, because their mouth literally is built to just suck on food from the bottom. It's got them on the side of the lip right here. This one's super brown and yellow on the bottom. Just a nice sucker fish, probably about a 18 inch sucker fish right there. So we're going to let this guy go. That's awesome. No skunk, so we can't complain. Right back he goes. It was very nice of that sucker fish to leave my worm on. So I'm gonna not fish two rods right now. I'm just gonna fish one rod because it's kind of hectic with two rods. And I really just wanna learn and see where these fish are hanging out. That way I know where to hone in on my spots. I mean, I caught the sucker fish right here. I had a fish on right here as well. So we'll just launch it right back in front of that little spill right there and I'm not even gonna put the rod down. I'm just gonna hold the rod because these fish are like biting it as soon as I put my rod down. So I can feel my weight just getting pushed around with this little back eddy right here. But, oh, that's a fish right there. That's a fish right there. What? I think my weight is snagged. I think we might have figured it out here, guys. Just fish right next to that spill right there. So I think that's what we're going to do. But he took my worm, so let's put another night crawler on here. I'm just going to use enough just to cover my hook. That way, if they take it, they have to take the hook. Oh my gosh, that's a fish. Oh, Got him. He almost pulled my rod in the water. Pike minnow. Solid pike minnow right there. And this little spill right here is just loaded with a bunch of these fish. Sucker fish, pike minnow. I'm assuming walleye. No trout yet, but I know there's trout in here. Uh, bass, who knows? We could all catch almost anything at this point. So nice little pike minnow. Second fish for the day. And I know a lot of you guys are like, never release pike minnow, but if I'm being honest, in this body of water, there's really no purpose to just kill the pike minnow. 
depending on the body of water that I'm fishing, there will be times where I will uh, dispatch the pike minnow, but this is just not one of those places where the pike minnow really are like sought after in terms of a bounty. So I really have no purpose to get rid of this pike minnow. I'll rig this worm back up and see what else is in here. At this point, you really can't count anything out. Everything's fair game, but I casted that one in this calmer water. So we're gonna cast this right back in there. Oh, oh, this has gotta be a fish. Yep. I missed him. I don't know how I missed him, but I, I missed him. That was a horrible cast. Fish on. Yep, fish on, little guy. Oh, it's a trout. I caught a little trout. I just threw this in there too. My other rod broke and I was trying to fix it and threw this thing out there and this little trout just, just hammered it. And uh, this is a hatchery. You can see they clipped off the adipose fin right here. I wasn't planning on keeping any trout, but this guy, he kind of swallowed the hook. So I'm not gonna release a trout that's like lethally hooked. Since he swallowed the hook, take a rock and bonk him. So now he's out and I gotta figure out how I can retrieve my hook. I forgot my pliers. It's not a fishing trip of mine if I don't forget something. I got the hook out, so nice little like 10 inch rainbow trout. So I guess we have fish to eat after all. I didn't bring any of my cooking stuff, so we'll lay them on the rocks for now and get back to fishing. It's just kind of crazy how like you can sit there for several minutes and not have a bite and you recast and it's like fish on it almost immediately. With where I'm fishing right now, these rocks, I would actually prefer it if my main line was not braid because braid doesn't do good in rocks, but I already had braid tied on and I was just a little too lazy to re-spool mono or full rods my main line. So we'll just stick with braid. But so far so good. We caught three species. So really can't complain. One thing to know is when you're fishing a lot of current like this and you're bottom fishing like I am right now, your worm is never dead sticking on the bottom because there's so much current and so much water pushing through. Your worm is constantly getting pushed up off the bottom and like going up and like doing all sorts of motion up off the bottom where it draws a lot of attention from fish. So compare that to like fishing like dead calm water. Yeah, your worm will probably just be dead sticking on the bottom, but not the case here because we know we're fishing in fast moving water. So you don't need a super gigantic piece of worm for them to see it. And I'm not even casting that far. I'm casting like 10 yards off the shoreline and I'm letting it drift into this little spillway right here. And uh, you kind of just have to be cautious of getting snagged because there is a lot of rocks here. Dang it. Okay, got a loose. What? I thought I got it loose for a second. No, my line's just wrapped around a bunch of stuff. Wait, what in the, oh, I got somebody's line. What?
caught somebody's line. Whenever you catch somebody's line, just do your best to take it out of the water. That way there's no litter in the water and somebody else doesn't have to deal with it. All right, back in business. The hardest part about this spot is certainly just trying not to get snagged. So, leave that there. Come back here, and I gotta re-rig this rod. So I've been running a Carolina rig, but I think the better rig for this particular spot right here is gonna be a three-way rig. So I'm gonna tie a three-way rig on this second rod. The problem with the Carolina rig is if your weight gets snagged, uh, you're probably losing your entire rig because when you're using a Carolina rig, the weight is most likely the thing that's gonna get snagged. And if you have to pull off the weight, like everything else, your swivel, your hook, everything just comes sliding off of your main line. So I'm gonna use a three-way rig on this second rod. I feel like it'll fare a little bit better with where I'm fishing right now. It's nothing special. We're just out here trying to catch fish. So far, three fish, three species. Can't really complain. And it's nice because we have shade. Instead of wasting lead weights, I'm just gonna use some rocks here as my weight. That way, if I lose them, I, it's just a rock, you know? Here's essentially my three-way rig right here. I've got my main line up here, I've got my hook, and I've got my weight. So it's basically a T. That's all it is. Very basic. Grab another worm. And hook them up. Just like that. And back to fishing. Back in business with this rod. Getting a little hungry if I'm being honest. Got those two finally settled. What did I bring for lunch today? This Gatorade, one Twinkie. It's not healthy, but I'm burning a lot more calories out here than this one single Twinkie will give me. So not too concerned, you know, Twinkie. Mm. That tastes wonderful. All right, let's launch this way out here. See if there's any fish in here. That's a fish. Little guy, it's probably a trout. Oh, well, it might be a little bit more decent than I thought. That water was so fast, I threw it way out there and it kicked my weight all the way back into this little spill right here. What is that? Oh, pike minnow. Another pike minnow, took it fast. All I had to do was recast, you know? So there's another pike minnow right there. Gonna unhook them real fast. Just got them on the side of the mouth. If I was gonna fish for a catfish later tonight or if I was gonna go sturgeon fishing, I'd keep this guy as bait, but I really have no purpose to keep this guy at all for bait. So nice little pike minnow. Since that produced, we're just gonna cast it into the same exact spot and we're just gonna let the current take my worm right back into that 
little spot where that pike minnow picked it up. Uh oh, I got a fish on that rod right now, but I gotta fix my GoPros. I got a fish on. I got a fish on. He's on. Feels like a nice one. Oh, that's a nice trout. Beautiful trout. I was still changing my GoPro batteries. That's a beautiful trout right there. Wow. Oh, he didn't even swallow it. Oh, let me get the net because I want to release him. So with trout, if you don't plan to keep them, you want to handle trout as little as possible. This is a really good like 14, 15 inch rainbow right here. I turned back around and my rod was just like about to go in the water. Yep. So get him right in the net and he actually swallowed my hook. Not surprised because I took a little too long to set the hook, but if I'm being honest, I don't mind taking a trout home. I'm already going to take the little guy home. So I guess it doesn't hurt to have one that's more worthy of a meal, you know, but this guy is a hatchery, so I can keep him. My little rock weight worked just as planned. Beautiful rainbow trout. You can see out of post fin is clipped. So he's a hatchery. We could keep him. I left a line like this just to remind me so I don't forget when I'm home that there's a hook inside of him. Um, but I'm just gonna toss my two trout in the net and I'm gonna keep them in the water just so they don't dry out on land. So I'll just leave them right here. And to ensure that our net won't go anywhere, we'll just put a rock right here. I'm really proud of my little rock weight here. I knew it was gonna work, but I didn't think I was gonna catch a trout like that. My gosh, that was a fish. That was a fish. Did you guys see how hard that fish pulled? He was right up along the shoreline. Is this a fish? Is that a fish or is that my weight bouncing? Oh, that's a fish on as soon as it dropped. <laughs> what? It caught me so off guard. I just casted it. This area right in front of me has died off. So I figured I'd toss it a little bit further out there. And as soon as it hit, this one's fighting like a trout. Is it a trout? It's gotta be a trout. Yes, sir, it's a trout. You can often tell what fish you have on just by the way they fight. With trout, there's a lot of head shakes. And this guy, once again, choked it. So, man, this random fishing trip that I planned has turned into a full-blown trout mission we're gonna take this guy and toss him in with our other two trout right here let's make sure they're in the water yep 
just like that. I'm not going to wait any longer. What I will do before I leave is I'm going to gut my trout. That way I don't make a mess at home. So we're just going to gut these out, toss the guts back to the crawdads, and we'll go on from there. I'm just going to gut them, so I'm just going to go from the vent here and just cut all the way up to its chin up here and from this little slit right here out the other slit over here. Just cut that open like that. And from here, we're just gonna rip. So my hook's right here. So I'm gonna try to retrieve my hook before I toss this back. But once you have it open like this, it's just a matter of ripping all of its gills along with its two front fins and all the guts. Once you do that, then your trout is pretty much gutted. The only thing that's left is its kidney, which is this dark line right here. But what I want to do is I want to go to my hook, if I could find it. I've got my hook. So gills and guts, back to the crawdad. Got my hook right here, put on this rock. And then this dark line right here, we're just gonna smush this with the thumb. Once you smush out the kidney like this, just rinse it out and your trout is gutted, cleaned more or less, ready for seasoning and ready to cook. That's the thing I love about trout. Not only are they delicious, but they're very fun to catch, very fun to fight. And when you clean them like this, they're also relatively easy to clean. People like to scale trout. And my honest opinion is the trout scales actually don't bother me. I kind of just eat the trout scales if I'm being honest. They're not like panfish scales where they really stand out in your mouth when you eat it. There you go. That's one cleaned rainbow trout. Just gotta do the two other ones and we are good to go. I will just reiterate this. I wasn't planning to come out here to catch and keep fish, but these three right here, they swallowed the hooks too far. Partially my fault for letting them swallow the hook, but sometimes you can't help it. But I'm not complaining though. Two nice sized trout right here and a little 10 inch trout. So gonna take them home, throw them in the frying pan eat some trout.